Hi, I'm Kirsten Persley with OHS TV Studio, here interviewing Jeanette Krupp for a local Legend Spotlight. How are you doing today, Jeanette? Hi, Kirsten. How are you? I'm good. We're doing good. We had workouts this morning, and these are all of my athletes. I have two seniors here, and Brooke and Hannah, and the other ones are all juniors that I have all coached. They're all awesome. high school. So. so to start, what can you tell us about your time in the Owensville community? I have been told that you were an OHS graduate. Did you enjoy your time here? Yes, um, living in Owensville has definitely been my foundation throughout life. Um, I remember when I graduated high school, I couldn't wait to get out. Yeah. <laughs> to go explore and do things. And I was excited to have a volleyball scholarship. I went and played Division One volleyball in Virginia mm -hmm. at Liberty University. That's very cool. But the older that I get, the more you say you miss coming back. Yeah. And I miss my family, my friends, and I realized just how special the community was. You really can't get much better than a small town community that's really there for you. And they've been there for my family through so many part times. Mm -hmm. um, you were an all state volleyball player here. What was your time playing volleyball like? <laughs> Wonderful. Coach Rick Teen came <laughs> along. I actually didn't know if I was going to play volleyball in high school. I was leaning more towards softball at that time. Really? Uh huh. And <laughs> I know they're softball players. Now they're mad. <laughs> but Coach Rick Teen came and he changed everything. Just a positive aspect, um, opened our eyes to a whole new world. And I just thrived with him and went on and, you know, did things that I didn't even know that I was capable of. I started varsity as a freshman and was on the varsity team my whole career. That's very impressive. So, <laughs> it was fun. Yeah. Um, you spoke at our school for an assembly. I think I was in like eighth grade whenever this happened. I, I just remember crying from it. That's what I remember. Um, how did you get into public speaking like this? It's full circle there, huh? Yes. <laughs> um, I always say the purpose found me. I never thought that I would be going around speaking at schools, trying not to get emotional. Um, unfortunately, you know, things in life happen. And for me, it was a matter of sharing that so that other people knew they weren't going through the pain alone. But um, many people know that since I spoke there, um, I spoke about my cousin who had passed, Brendan Krupp, and then my brother who was struggling at the time, and my brother has now passed. Um, he overdosed in 2021. So the story has changed with the ending. Um, but there's nothing more than just, it was pretty much, hey, you're connecting with people. You're able to connect well with people. Will you come and speak? And I just share from the heart. And so I don't feel qualified. I remember the first time I did, I was like, I don't even know what I'm doing. Yeah. And so I just spoke from the heart and I just share my story and just let people know that they're loved and they're not alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm very sorry to hear that. Um, your speech, it was so heartbreaking, but so touching. I know it touched me and it touched everybody else, I think. I don't think there's one person that wasn't touched. Um, Thank you. So it was it was great. Um, so you currently live in Texas, correct? Correct. Uh, what made you move to Texas? Being with all these, you know, girls here. <laughs> Strength and conditioning coach. So I had been a teacher and a volleyball coach in Missouri for years. Um, Washington, East Central, Borgia, Bourbon, and then I went on to work at Mercy as a health and wellness coordinator, mm -hmm. and I got my master's degree in sport management, and I became a pro bodybuilder in 2014. Mm -hmm. Someone reached out from Denton, Texas, and said, hey, we know that you had your degrees to teach, plus your love and passion is fitness. Would you want to do strength and conditioning? You're not in a classroom. Your classroom is the weight room, and you're going to help build the programs. Um, and so I said, absolutely. And my son and I moved down here on my own and we've been here now. We'll be starting my eighth year this summer. That's very cool. Can you tell us about, um, bodybuilding, what, what your role is in it? I think that's really cool to hear about. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I did it for years and made it at the national level, won my IFBB pro. Wow. Yep, now the nation, and that was great, but I gave that all up to start my nonprofit, and I just felt that I had a bigger purpose than standing on stage, and I mean, it's a lot, a lot of work, yeah. um, don't get wrong, mentally, physically, right. hours and hours I put in the gym, especially as a single mom working a full-time job, mm -hmm. plus coaching, um, the food, all of that, but the nonprofit to me was more important, and that's what I continue to do now. 
Yeah. Can you tell us about your nonprofit, actually? Yeah, it's called Stay Strong Crub. Um, I started just one day. I, you know, got a phone call from my mom, and my brother was struggling again, was in and out of prison, different jails, rehab. And my cousin had already passed in 2018, and the community that we live in, mm-hmm. Gascony County, Franklin County, all that were top, you know, meth at that time. Right. And we were losing so many loved ones. I was just tired of it. And the way I worked was someone's got to do something. I kept looking yeah. who wanted to do something. No one's doing anything. So I was like, I guess it's got to be me. Yeah. And I called my mom and I said, I think I'm going to bike across four states. Mm-hmm. and try to stop along the way because one of the yoga instructors down here actually said she'd follow me in her car. We neither one have done it. I've never done a bike race yeah. ever. <laughs> um, I just know that mentally I could train and pretty much I'll do anything that I'm going to tell myself that I'm going to do physically. Um, I've gone through a lot of health issues recently. I've had hip surgery to now I have four anchors in my hips. Oh, really? um, during that year that I lost my brother, Riley, she was on my cheer team. Um, she was actually there, the cheer team. I don't know what I would have done without them. Um, I went through a hip surgery, elbow surgery, and then I was going to have to have a double mastectomy. Um, I thought I had cancer. Oh, I also really? had cancer. And so the day that I was supposed to have surgery, we buried my brother. Um, so kind of joke. It's my humor. I don't know. That's how I make it through. But I lost the gym, which is my safe haven. Um, My brother and my boobs all in the same week. I talk about it now. (laughs) But (laughs) that's how it was. I mean, it was it was a rough time, but they made sure my son was fed. They had, you know, gift cards for him to go get food. They made sure that I was okay. I don't sincerely know what I would do without my Denton Bronco family here of athletes that I have. but so I've healed up from that. And this year was my first ride back and the first year that my brother wasn't at the finish line for me. But I just got tired of all that was happening. I decided to take off on a bike because I can't run due to my hip surgeries. Mm-hmm. And my orthopedic had said, you might want to get yourself a bike. And so I did. And then I was like, well, I've never done a race, but 450 miles, I could probably do. Let's try to get to 50. Yeah. <laughs> And then I just started training and then I did it and it's kind of picked up and the news started following me, radio shows, the newspaper, just very blessed. But it's because so many people are impacted by this. So many people are affected by this. So right. many people have lost loved ones. Over 100,000 overdoses just last year. That's horrible. So I wish I didn't have to do it for what I'm doing it for, but that's what made me just pick up and said, someone's got to do something. Yeah. Uh, how many bike races would you say that you have done? Do you even know the answer to that? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I've done three times now of 450 miles Mm -hmm. uh, across the four states. And then I've done 100 mile in Florida. And then we're about to announce this year's bike rides when it's going to be coming up and what I'm going to do, it's going to be pretty special to me. So I hope everyone listens for that. Um, it's going to mean a lot and I feel that I need to do it. I'm going to change the location of the ride. So I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Where, what states do you ride through on your 450 mile? Usually now I have done Ohio up to Indiana, Illinois, and then I finished in Missouri. Mm -hmm. This year was Union where we finished. I finished in Washington Union. I finished in Sullivan one year. Interesting. Um, I know you currently train athletes now. Can you tell us a little bit about that? You guys want to? How's it go? Look at these. <laughs> They're all jacked. <laughs> no, she really does help us, like, uh, physically, I say, because um, I don't think I would have as much. I'm a pitcher, so I don't think I would have that much, you know, like, muscles. And I can't go as hard. Mm-hmm. So she pushes me to get to where I am now, which I thank her for that. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Everybody agrees. <laughs> Taylor's a basketball and softball player. Riley's cheerleading. Road softball, hand of softball. Kiki is basketball and track and volleyball. Yeah, I was going to ask, are there any volleyball players on there? She's getting ready to go to regionals for track. Really? Yes. But I try to not only just um, go through the workouts wrong, but to show them how life, because sometimes handy is some pretty bad cards and to show that you got to just stay strong. That's why I always say stay strong and just keep going and that you're going to make it. It's going to be okay. 
So. Right. Um, what advice would you have for OHS students graduating and going to their next chapter after high school? Great question. Um, now that I've been through so much, I would probably actually just say, you don't need to know all the answers right now. Mm -hmm. um, enjoy life, relax, know that you're loved, you're going to go through hard times. Um, mental health is a big deal right now. So many kids feel so much pressure and so much stress. And I would like to tell you, you know that you're always loved. It's never as bad as you think it is. And there's always someone you could talk to, but you don't have to have it figured out right now. I, I never thought that, you know, when I was your age, I was going to be going around schools talking about overdoses, you know, yeah. mental health never crossed my mind. So to me, your journey, your path, it's going to find, you know, your purpose is going to find you through that. So just enjoy it and be, and be happy and see where it goes. And it's never too late to change. So you could be 40 and be like, you know what, I want to do something else. And you can. <laughs> um, how many other public speaking events have you done now that I just remember that? <laughs> <laughs> Did, have uh, you gone to any other high schools? Hey, you can go into my website, <laughs> www.stagestrongcrup.com. But they're all on there. Heather Gillard is my marketing director. She puts everything on there. Mm -hmm. um, Lots of news stations, lots of radios, lots of newspapers and rehab facilities, sober homes. Um, it's it's been a great experience. So it's great to hear. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you, Jeanette, for your time and participating with me in this interview. Um, is there any final words you would like to add? Just everyone there um, know that you're going to go do great things. And when life gets tough, stay strong and know that, you know, again, like I said, that um, your purpose will find you. Just keep going. Mm -hmm. Girls, anything else? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See how quiet they are. They're not this quiet. <laughs> they, she nominated me just this past week for teacher appreciation and wrote me one of the sweetest letters. Um, but they have all said very kind things to me, and that's what keeps me going, is knowing that I've made a difference. Right. So, a huge, yeah. thank you. She's a huge okay. difference. <laughs> Aw. So, yeah. I just love what I do. But. That's great. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>